It's so much smarter to take that money and keep it in cash reserves, keeping the money in your business so that when you have a downturn, because business is ups and downs, ups and downs, it always is. So that downturn will be inevitable, whether it comes next year or five years from now, it will come. So it's better to be prepared, having that cash reserve being relatively debt free. So you can get through the hard times in your business. When we entered COVID, we're operating at that high debt ratio. And those are the ones that closed first. They didn't have the capital. It ran out. They couldn't sustain themselves throughout an economic downturn. So it's really important to manage your cash levels really well. And hello, that- hello, hello. Welcome to another Knowledge Bomb episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential and together change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Melissa Houston. If this is your first time joining us, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell and hit that like button. This will be greatly appreciated in helping getting out this content to great leaders and great individuals like yourself. Melissa is the founder of the Fractional CFO Agency, and she helps successful business owners increase their profit margins without having to increase revenue so that they keep more money in their pockets while increasing their personal wealth. Melissa seen the bottom and climbed her way back up, her personal and her financial bounce back from concealing $100,000 in personal debt. Please help me welcome Melissa with resetting your debt mindset. So I was a social worker for about six years, and then I transitioned into accounting and became a CPA and spent about 20 years in the corporate public accounting and government world. And not being truly happy with the direction my career was going in and not feeling like it was really a good fit, I decided to branch out on my own and start this agency because I wanted to marry my people skills with my money skills. Mm. And there's nothing that feels more satisfying to me than helping people and helping people with their numbers and understanding their business finances a really good fit for my personality. And it allows me to work with clients who, you know, we're working one-on-one, we're working through their problems. I'm helping them understand their finances. I'm not just a fractional CFO. I also like to coach my clients so that they understand how to interpret their business numbers. I give them the information they need, but I also give them the coaching that goes with it so that they start learning and understanding how their business operates. Because when you know the finances in your business, you can make profitable decisions for your business. Mm. Mm. Definitely true. And it's definitely interesting because here in today's time, a lot of times, a lot of us entrepreneurs, we go into business and we really don't understand the concept of finance itself. What is your experience with that? I love that you bring that up because it's so true. Like, you know, especially when we're starting our business, we keep hearing about, you know, you need to know sales, you need to know marketing, you need to know branding, you you know, like there's so many things that we need to know. And as entrepreneurs, there's so many hats we have to wear, but people aren't talking about money in your business. Mm. And the reality is 82% of businesses fail due to financial mismanagement. So I always quote this because I'm like, if you take the time and understand and learn how to manage the money within your business, not only are you going to be making a lot more profit in your business and profit is what you want, because that's the money you get to keep at the end of the day, but you will know your business really well. Right. So it's, it's really important to not get distracted by all the shiny objects and all the things that you need to do. I basically say, first thing you need to do when you start a business is get those sales in. Right. Once you get that money coming in, you need to understand how to manage that money. Mm. I definitely want us to stay here because us entrepreneurs, we start a business where we're focusing on making money. It's making money. But you said something so key. It's not just making money, but managing the money. So I want to switch right here. Uh, What are some common mistakes that you have seen business owners make launching their businesses and how can we avoid or overcome them? One of the top mistakes I see made is business owners not understanding the difference between revenue coming in the door Mm -hmm. and profit. Mm. Right. So often you hear, especially, you know, in the online world, they're talking about, well, you know, my business is a six figure business or seven figure, whatever numbers they're shouting out. Right. And to me, that doesn't mean a whole lot because 
you know, I've been working for 20 years. I have seen multi-million dollar companies go bankrupt. They are bringing in the cash, but they're not managing it well, right? So what's important to manage is, yes, it's important to bring those sales in. And if you got those, if you have those high sales levels, fantastic. But you also need to make sure that you are making profit on those sales. Mm. And what profit is, it's the difference between the revenue, less the expenses to run your business, and what you have left over is the profit. And you have to be sure that your profit margins are keeping their average against your competitors or better, because there's a big difference between a 5% profit margin and a 25% profit margin, right? So if you're just bringing in 5%, then you want to really look at what's going on in your business and tighten up your, your profit margins to get it to at that competitive level. So it's really important for business owners to understand that revenue does not mean that your business is successful. Profit means your business is, is successful because that's the longevity of the business. That's what you can either reinvest into your business to grow it or take it out to enjoy whatever you choose to do with that profit. The second thing I often see entrepreneurs do, and it's a concern to me, is you know they look at their bank balance and they, they're gauging how well they're doing based on what's in their account. And that's not money for you to spend unless you're absolutely sure that money is there for you to spend, right? So cash management is a completely different management tool that you need to take on to ensure that you're going to have the money coming in the business and going out of the business to keep you sustainable. Because if you spend that money and you realize, oops, I forgot I had a certain bill come in and I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to pay it now then that becomes problematic. So you really need to follow your cash management. And then I'm going to throw a third one in there is not tracking your taxes, right? So when you track how profitable your business is each and every month, it allows you to estimate how much you need to pay in taxes. So I know in the US, you guys do quarterly tax installments. It's kind of similar in Canada. So Having that plan so you don't get whopped with some huge tax bill, because when things are going well, you know, if you're bringing in the business and you're making a lot of money, people are like, woohoo, party time, but they forget about the taxes that you have to pay on the profit, right? So you don't want to get caught with not having the cash flow to pay your tax bill as well. And I know a lot of times uh, entrepreneurs, especially uh, some of us that's, that's starting out, uh, launching a new company, we, we start out and we start out so thin. Mm. What is the danger in starting off thin? And if you have a rule of thumb, you know, what would be a good rule of thumb for a safe or a healthy financial balance? Yeah. Don't take on too much debt at the beginning, right? It's like you really, I really mean it when I say focus on getting those sales in and then manage your money, right? So in the beginning, there's so many competing things that need your money, right? You know, you have to pay for this, you have to pay for that. Startup costs are crazy. But if you can bootstrap and be very cognizant of how much money you're spending, how much debt you're taking on, like try to keep minimal debt, if possible, keep zero debt and just reinvest the profit. Yes, it, it makes you grow a little slower, but you don't have that financial stress hanging over you. Like if you over leverage and you've got too much debt, then, you know, the alternative is you're facing sleepless nights, mm. a lot of stress, not knowing how you're going to pay the bills. You know, like you don't need to take that toll on yourself. If you grow your business a little slower, take on minimal debt, pay for things as you have the cash, it is slower, but it will give you a, a higher level of confidence and a peaceful feeling as business owners, like we are in a unique position to create wealth. And, and I'm talking about the business owners who own hundred percent of their business, right? So everything that you earn in your business, that profit is increasing your net worth. So whether you decide to reinvest into your business and grow your business, or you decide to invest in something else to get your money working for you, that is how you have that unique opportunity to build wealth. Your businesses can be your largest financial asset if you manage the money well. And then the, the other point to having a business and being able to create wealth is that you get a lot of tax deductions and a lot of tax saving strategies are involved with that. And you were talking about, you know, the debt aspect. And I want to park here a little bit as far as debt. So you, you said focus on sales. 
What are some specific examples of that type of debt? I know borrowing money is one, but what are some other ways, you know, some debt we may want to be careful uh, while focusing on those sales? Yeah. So when you sign up for programs or courses or group programs where you've got a long-term commitment and the, you know, programs are outrageous fees, Mm -hmm. be careful of what you're signing up for. You know, you need to be sure that you can sustain paying those, those monthly fees. Um, Lines of credit, though, that's another one where you have to be really careful of not accumulating. And just generally anybody who's going to lend you money where you're going to have to return that money, be very, very careful of it. So the reason why I say that debt is very scary for business owners is because if you have too much debt, like, let's just, let's take a scenario that is not, you know, involving COVID right now, right? Because so many business owners have struggled during COVID. But let's say, you know, you're having a really great year and things are going well. And you're like, you know, I want to take out a bunch of money because I don't want to pay taxes on it. So I'm going to buy like, you know, some business stuff. And that's just a really bad idea, in my opinion, right? It's so much smarter to take that money and keep it in cash reserves of whatever sort that you'd like, like whole different conversation, but keeping the money in your business so that when you have a downturn, because business is ups and downs, ups and downs, it always is. So that downturn will be inevitable, whether it comes next year or five years from now, it will come. So it's better to be prepared having that cash reserve and, you know, being relatively debt free. So you can get through the hard times in your business, right? Because so many businesses, is when we entered COVID, we're operating at that high debt ratio. And those are the ones that closed first, right? They couldn't, they didn't have the capital, it ran out, they couldn't sustain themselves throughout, you know, um, an economic downturn. So it's really important to manage your cash levels really well. And that's part of the cash management system. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So why do business owners need that cash reserve? Okay, so if your revenue starts drying up, if your sales are drying up and you're going through a downturn, but you've got a team of people that you employ, you've got debt that you need to pay back, you've got your monthly payments, you know, there's still business goes on whether your sales are coming in or not. So having that cash to cover those expenses is really important and that will help reduce the stress level. You'll feel more confident because you've got, you know, runway that you can get through hard times and it will, you know, well, ultimately just reduce the stress level and keep you in business for longer. I love this. And I really, I really want to, because we're starting business. We, we have this idea. We have this idea. We're passionate. And sometimes the money, like I said, the money is so thin. If you was to talk to someone, they have a great idea, but they may, the finance may be really thin type of advice would you give that individual a three-step program i mean if you have a really great idea and you really really want to go for it you have to do the research to make sure first of all if it's going to pay off so doing the business models and ensuring that you know with all the money like let's say you had the money to invest and you invested it to see how long it would take to get a return on that investment. Make sure it's a viable project before you even go forward with anything, right? So business models are a great way of of mapping out the viability of the business. The second thing is if, you know, if it is proving to be a really good investment to make, but you're short on cash and you cannot get the financing or it doesn't make sense to over leverage yourself at that point. And I I know people hate to hear this, but you got to do what you can to raise the funds. So you could do crowdsourcing, you could maybe go for venture capital, or you can wait and really try to make up some, like earn some money, get some money going on something else that you can put into this new investment. You have a lot of entrepreneurs. I know you've you've met them and I've also met them that when they start their business, they immediately living off of every dime that's put into the account. What's your thought on that? And what, what, what advice could you give to that individual? Yeah. I mean, entrepreneurs are very special people, right? (laughs) In a certain way where we, you know, we get an idea and we want action. We want to take action right away. And we feel like it's going to be a winner of an idea. And, you know, there's no way this is going to fail and the whole bit. Now, being on the other side where I see so many entrepreneurs who have been in this position, and I have seen so many times where it has not 
worked out in their favor, it is the worst thing to see when a human is suffering because they've lost everything on this big investment that they thought was a sure thing. So I always caution people to go in with a clear head caution and safety around it, right? Because you don't want to lose everything. You don't want to put yourself at risk of losing your home and your family's homeless and, you know, like everything dried up. And these are worst case scenarios, but unfortunately they do happen. So when, when I'm confronted with entrepreneurs like that, who have an idea, that's why I'm like, let's sit down. We'll go over the numbers. You need to make a smart, informed decision before you go ahead with anything. So, you know, if you've taken action, you're like, no, 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 this is going to be the winner of a deal. And you're living like, you know, scraping by in your bank account and stuff like that. Well, if you're willing to live like that, then by all means, go for it. Because, you know, so many people have done that and have been successful. So it's more of like a risk tolerance. It's how much risk are you willing to take on for what you believe in? And, you know, some people are like, yeah, I'm going all in. I'm totally okay with the consequences. And other people are like, you know what? I don't really like those consequences. So I'm going to go a little slower. Yeah, I, 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 I like that. How can our personal finance management hold us back from wealth? Personal finance management is so important as well, right? So when you're a business owner, like I mentioned, you know, you're managing the money in your business and you can create it to be the biggest financial asset that you have. But if you're not managing your personal finances, then, you know, it can offset each other, right? Where, you know, it doesn't work out well. They, they play a role together. So managing your personal debt levels, not just your business debt levels, Managing your, you know, debt repayment plans, managing your budget, you know, people hate the B word, but you have to live within your means in order to avoid creating debt. And that goes for business and personal, right? So if you have X amount of money that you need to to earn, to, to pay all your bills, then that's what you need to do. And you can't spend over that if you don't have it. Right. And then other things that you can do that people often overlook as entrepreneurs is you need to protect your income coming in, because if you have dependents and something happens to you where you have a critical illness and then you're not allowed or you can't work or, you know, unfortunately something happens um, and your family is left without you and earning income, you need to insure those risks, right? Mitigate those risks through insurance, um, health plans, um, you know, stuff like that. And really the other thing too about, you know, protecting your wealth is understand what you're investing in personally as well, right? So understand where you can put extra money to get your money working for you. Cause that is really the secret of being wealthy is having that lump of cash in some sort of asset that's going to be making money for you while it just sits there, right? So whether that's through rental income or investing in the stock market or what have you, find you know something that that you that resonates with you and you like to invest in. So it's really important that you think strategically about your investments. And like I mentioned earlier too, those personal tax planning incentives for business owners, do not neglect them. Pay the money to see the tax accountant because that is an investment. And you will get an ROI on that investment from that tax account and what they advise you to do in for your tax saving strategies. Wow. That is a load of knowledge bones. A lot of, a lot of information. <laughs> wow. It's a good. lot of information. A lot of information, <laughs> a lot of good information to give us something uh, to think about because we're at the beginning of the, of the year. And I think this is a good time to reset, to reset our minds. Yes. Yeah, I love that you brought that up because especially for entrepreneurs, money mindset is so important, right? So if you have a negative relationship with money, so, you know, your money mindset could be, could have been established like as early as your earliest memory in childhood, right? So you learn through your experiences what your relationship with money is going to be. So if you grew up in a house where, you know, money was never available, you know, maybe your, your parentals were always in debt and, you know, they were fighting about it and what have you, that could be the money story that you're carrying and you're inadvertently doing that to yourself. You're, you never realized, you never made the connection. Like, this is what I learned. And as an adult, I'm repeating the same mistakes that my parents did. Right. So it's really important to understand your relationship with money and create that positive relationship. 
um, because your money mindset as an entrepreneur can hold you back in your business if it's not healthy. Right. So, and it does, it doesn't extend to just, you know, a debt mindset. It's also like how you feel about selling, how you feel about being wealthy. So many people have issues about being wealthy. Right. And what I challenge my clients is, you know, why not be wealthy? Like wealth is okay, but a lot of people feel like it's greedy. It's unnecessary. They're not worthy, you know, and it's reflected through how you manage your business how you feel about sales, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about how much you're, you're pricing your services or your offers at, right? Like there's nothing in business that doesn't affect your profit line. So you have to make sure that as a business owner, you are in that right mindset so you can optimize your profit as well. Wow. Another knowledge bomb. Another knowledge bomb. That is so amazing. And I'm glad you definitely mentioned that. I, I want to talk a little bit about scaling because here's the business owner. Okay, you're making money and now it's time to hire. And so what I want you to do, uh, what are some money management tips, tools, advice for scaling that you can share with the Lead to Greatness community to help us reach our greatest potential? Absolutely. So my favorite thing to do, my favorite activity is creating a financial plan for your business for the year. Okay. So if you are planning on growing your business and you want to bring on new hires and you want to maybe invest in some services that you couldn't afford before, what have you, you need to create that financial plan before you commit to anything. Mm. So what a financial plan is, is it's a 12 month operating forecast. So it will take into account, you know, like maybe in, you know, July, you want to add a salesperson and you put in all the requirements of their contracts. So they would have their base salary plus their commissions and how much they need to sell to make X amount of dollars and stuff like that. And then maybe you want to increase your marketing budget and you would include that in your forecast. And, you know, basically anything that you're planning for the year and you want to grow your business, you include all this in your forecast. So you understand how much revenue you have to create to cover these expenses so that your profit margin is still healthy, right? So if you think, and quite often people think, okay, well, I'm making more money, so obviously I can afford it, but that's not the case. I never let people make decisions until they've crunched the numbers, right? Because the numbers don't lie. The numbers are there to tell you the truth. People may lie to you and say, yeah, 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 you can afford it, but your numbers don't lie. And they will be brutally honest with you. You're definitely helping us financially because Mm -hmm. you are right. You said this in the very beginning, and this is the absolute truth. A lot of time, I mean, we love talking about everything else. We want to talk about branding. We want to talk about marketing. We even talk about scaling, but nobody want to deal with the finance. Nobody want to deal with the budgeting. Those are the things we don't want to deal with. You know, People think it's not sexy, right? It's the boring (laughs) side. It's a little, but money is the sexy part. So if you're counting how much money you're going to be earning, then you probably want to start looking at those spreadsheets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I remember my wife and I, we had a, we had an interesting experience uh, early on. Uh, we were both around 26 years old. And I read this book by Robert Kiyosaki called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm-hmm. And I remember my wife and I, we first started out financially on the financial aspect, I mean, we, I was, I I joined the military and I remember we purchased our car. I remember I got promoted and we bought another car and I got promoted again and we bought two cars and, and it just kept happening and called the rat race. And we, we did that for so many years. And, and, And the truth of the matter is, it's like all the money we were making it was nothing showing up in the bank account. The bank account was the same when we was making 30,000 to when we was making 80,000. It it, it all, it it never changed, you know? Yeah. And then when I read that book, it was like, wow. And it changed my whole perspective and it allowed me to look at money different. And that's on the personal side of our personal lives. And I know it's also happens in the business world. I want you to, the parallel, because a lot of times we can see that. We can see that aspect 
on our personal side, like, wow, no, this don't make sense. It doesn't make sense to every time I get a raise, every time I'm making more money, I'm getting more bills and I'm in the same situation no matter what. I want you to give us an example of what that may look like when an entrepreneur is doing that same thing. We can identify it on in our personal life, but in business, it's not so obvious because mm -hmm. no one has come out with a book to say you're living the rat race uh, as a business owner. What does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it looks very similar to the lifestyle creep that you have in your personal life, but it's coming through your business. So you're maybe driving fancy cars that you think you can write off in your business expenses, or, you know, you want to look the part and you start, you know, buying all sorts of, you know, expensive clothes and, and, you know, going on these, you know, conferences that are in these exotic places <laughs> and, you know, like it, it just, it doesn't end. Right. So having that lifestyle creep, both in your personal life and your business finances is definitely something that you need to be careful of as well. So this is why I always say, like, I really want people to know their numbers so they understand Love what it. they can afford. Yes. Yeah, I uh, listened to Dave Ramsey and he said, he, he said, if you don't tell your money where to go, it will go anywhere. And I think this especially applied to business. Listen, lead to greatness, get a budget, yeah. get a plan. I know it doesn't look right. It may not be sexy. It may not feel like the right thing to do because we want to do other things. And that's the boring part. Mm -hmm. and get your accounting and, and, you know, get someone to help you, you know, um, you know, in that manner. And I want to switch a little bit and I want to ask you this question as a new client someone said hey, you know what man I want to work with Melissa Houston man yes. I want to work with her and her team she's amazing man she man she just kicking knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb I'm ready to shift my my, my mindset I'm ready to shift my 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 debt mindset and I want to get my finance in order but I need help I can't do it by myself. I don't have the knowledge. And I know in this podcast that Melissa, she couldn't give it all to us, you know, in this setting. So if, if a new client right now, someone has a new client, what can they expect from you and your team? Yeah. So when I work with clients, I go through my five-step cash confident framework for business owners. And I take them right from the money mindset to the financial dreaming and show them how it's possible to reach their financial goals, right? And we do that through, you know, learning the basics of being the CEO of your business, understanding your financial reports, knowing what your financial plan is for your business, knowing how to monitor your progress against that financial plan and having that cash management system in place. So this is what I do when I work with my coaching clients. And then for my fractional CFO clients, I do a lot with them. Like I do all the work for them, you know, managing their business finances. And then every month at minimum, you're going to meet with me and we're going to go over your finances together. And I'm going to explain to you where you are in your business. And you're going to tell me what's coming up. And we're going to have constant discussions, ongoing discussions about what's going on in the business and what your vision is for the business and how we're going to get you there. So a fractional CFO is there to guide and advise you and support you to get to your financial dreams. Now, one thing I want to say, if it's okay, I'm going to give myself a plug here because you mentioned that nobody's written a book like, you know, about business finances, but I just signed a publishing book deal and I will have a book coming out in 2023 about that. Give us a little, just a little tease. Okay. Yeah. So it's called Cash Confident, an entrepreneur's guide to creating a profitable business. And it goes through in detail, a lot of what we've covered today, right? We talk about what you need to do to be the best CEO of your business, why financial plans are so important, why your money mindset is important, how to dream big, have, have big financial dreams and achieve them. So we talk about all sorts of things in the book and I'm super, super excited for it to come out. You are excited and I am excited too. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I actually, so when, when did the book come out? Uh, we don't have a firm date yet, but it will be probably mid 2023. Can you do this? Because I really, I, I, I love the delivery that you, I mean, I mean, you, man, man, people think Amazon prime 
uh, do great delivery. I mean, you really delivered <laughs> on today. And I'm still, and, and, and I would love to have you getting closer to that date of your book launch. I would love to have you back on. Oh, amazing. Uh, the, the I love that. Thank you. Podcast to really, uh, this podcast alone is going to help. But I mean, to, you know, just to have that book, you know, in the hands, I would love to have you back on to maybe, you know, just dig a little bit more into the book just to. Absolutely. Really, yeah, absolutely. Man, awesome, 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 awesome. Do you work with clients in Canada only or Canada, U, United States? What is such what a good is, question? Like, yes, I love that question. So I work with Canada and the US because the mm -hmm. beauty of being neighbors is we have very similar tax and accounting laws. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. If someone wanted to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? Yeah, so you can always visit my primary website at melissahoustoncpa.com. And when you're there, you can download the free guide, the five-step cash confident framework that I was talking about. And um, if you want to follow me on social media, I'm on LinkedIn at Melissa Houston CPA. And same with Instagram at Melissa Houston CPA. On behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, we want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to Lead to Greatness if this is your first time. And if this podcast was helpful to you, leave a big thumbs up. And also, I want you to check out our Marriage Coach Podcast, the podcast with my wife and I. If you're on iTunes, please rate this podcast and leave a review and help get the word out. Again, thank you, Lead to Greatness Nation, for joining us on today. Looking forward to seeing you again on next week. Till then, remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace, we out. <laughs>